In the spring and summer of 1898, the United States thrust itself into the global power game with a 10-week victory over the crumbling Spanish Empire in the Spanish-American War. Secretary of State John Hay would later call it a splendid little war, which began with the highest motives, was carried on with magnificent intelligent spirits, and favored by the fortune that loves the brave. Future President Theodore Roosevelt would end the war universally heralded for the actions of his volunteer 1st U.S. Cavalry, the Rough Riders, at the pivotal Battle of the San Juan Heights. The Spanish-American War began in the aftermath of the internal explosion of the USS Maine in Havana Harbor in Cuba in 1898 and led to U.S. intervention in the Cuban War of Independence. Almost immediately, leaders in Washington, D.C. began planning for the invasion of Cuba. In the late spring of 1898, American forces landed in the southern part of Cuba near the city of Santiago. Advancing west, the plan was made to capture the San Juan Heights, which overlooked the city and harbor. On the morning of July 1, 1898, units under the command of then Brigadier General Hamilton S. Hawkins, a 62-year-old South Carolina native who served in the Union Army during the U.S. Civil War, converged at the San Juan Heights. Hawkins, a Brigadier General in the Volunteer Army, had fought at Gettysburg 35 years to the day that he would spearhead the assault at the Battle of San Juan Hill. Hawkins believed his brigade could ascend the hill, storm the blockhouse, and then turn the Spanish flank. His commanders were not as confident, but gave him permission to prepare for the assault. Hawkins' force got into position to attack, but did not advance because they didn't have orders. Suffering through intense tropical heat, the Americans were taking casualties from the Spanish. As men were hit, parts of the San Juan River Valley were dubbed Hell's Pocket and Bloody Ford. After absorbing enemy fire for some time, Lieutenant Jules G. Ord of Hawkins' staff asked his commander for permission to lead the men forward. Only storming the heights would silence the Spanish guns and finally end the killing. At first, Hawkins hesitated, but he then permitted Lieutenant Ord to begin the attack. Ord led the brigade into the attack supported by a battery of Gatling guns commanded by Lieutenant John H. Parker. Major General Joseph Wheeler, the former Confederate cavalry leader from Alabama, officially gave Roosevelt's commanders orders to attack. Lieutenant Parker was able to get his Gatling guns into the fight and began leveling the Spanish defenses. At this point, the Buffalo soldiers of the 3rd and 10th U.S. Cavalry surged up the hill directly into the Spanish fire. The standard bearer of the 3rd Cavalry fell during the onslaught, and Sergeant George Berry of the 10th U.S. Cavalry grabbed both standards and raced to the top of the hill with colors in each hands. Rally on the flag, boys! Future General of the Army's John J. Pershing was a second lieutenant with the 10th and would testify later that it had been Barry who reached the top of the hill first. Hawkins rushed to the front of the main body of his brigade, yelling, come on, come on, and led his troops up the hill where he was severely wounded in the foot near the crest. He would survive. Lieutenant Ord was reportedly the first officer to reach the top and began directing supporting fire when he was hit in the throat, mortally wounded. He died on the spot. Roosevelt and his Rough Riders would cross over from Kettle Hill and join the fight with the Buffalo Soldiers in the final assault on San Juan Hill. The Spanish continued their fight until their ammunition ran out and their commander, Vara del Rey, was killed at El Cane. The city of Santiago would ultimately fall on July 17th. Spain would quit the war on August 13th and the map of the world would once again be altered. The fight at San Juan Heights was the bloodiest and most famous battle of the Spanish-American War. The splendid little war would propel Theodore Roosevelt into the national spotlight and eventually the presidency. It all happened on July 1st, 1898. And now we know. And knowing is half the battle.